Hello everyone and welcome to another video covering the OCR Computing GCSE course. Uh, today we're looking at the fifth topic which is all about input and output devices. We're following on from quite a few videos on hardware, so this is sort of a little mini unit about hardware and we're looking at input and output devices today. So for a computer system to function it must have at least one device for inputs data, processes data and outputs data. This cycle um, as we'll see gets repeated and there may people may also give a fourth um, thing that's essential for things to fun for computer systems to function. They might say you have to store data as well. That's sort of the four processes that happen in a computer. Um, well, it, it doesn't particularly matter. That's just me showing it. But today we're looking at the input and output devices. So input devices um, allow data to go into a computer. Output devices allow data to come out of it. Um, just thought I should clear that up. And I want to be really um, um, clear here, that's the word. I want to be clear here because there's actually an exam question on this a couple of years ago and you never know it could come up again. It, you're going to be really clear on what the function is. It's quite easy just to go, oh, well, it, you know, data going into computer. But it's actually, if data goes into the computer through these input devices for processing. The data is not just in the computer for no reason. It's there to be processed at some point. It goes from here to here. And then for an output device, all the output devices, it presents the data that's been processed. Um, that's the reason why input and output devices are used and both of them used in conjunction means that a computer system can be controlled by an, exter by an external user. So if you just look at a couple of input and output devices, this is a, just a Venn diagram. I'm sure you've seen it in maths or statistics. Um, so you've obviously got input devices such as a mouse, a keyboard, a graphics tablet. This is what I use from time to time in these videos pretty poorly, I must admit. Um, so some people, amazing graphic designers, can draw some incredible things with these graphics tablets. I am not so talented. Um, also, webcam. It's quite a sinister picture of this webcam, actually. But a webcam is an input device because it films you, and for data, um, or the video goes into your computer. So output devices maybe include a speaker, a printer, a monitor. But some devices can be both, hence why I've done a Venn diagram. Um, this is a pretty rubbish image, it's just a free vector that I found on the internet, but it's actually supposed to be a touch screen. A touch screen can be both input and output. Um, as you can imagine, you you touching it with a, your finger or a stylus, and that controls it like a mouse does, but it's also a screen. So um, I've seen questions in the past that are sort of um, tick boxes, you tick it for an input, output. Um, or both, and this may clear it up a bit. You can also, um, in the sample space, so in statistics, we would say this Venn diagram outside the two rings are uh, is the sample space, so everything else. And there are some devices that don't input or output data, obviously, um, because we've got that other step processor. This is meant to be a diagram of a processor, again, a pretty rubbish vector that I found on the internet. Um, you can see we've got our binary digits inside the processor as we looked at in the binary logic video and the CPU video for that matter. So you have got some devices that don't really come under either category. Um, so the spec also asks you to look at some devices for users with specific needs, so maybe people who are disabled um, that can't use a computer in the way that you maybe can. So. Um, I've got two examples here. It doesn't list any specific examples you should know, but there may be a question asking you to sort of apply this slightly. And it's sort of common sense. I'm sure you can sort of appreciate what you may need to do. So one way that systems have been adapted for you for use of uh, much people who are um, disabled. So um, I believe, uh, I'm not 100% sure on the terminology. I shouldn't know this. Um, but people who haven't got, got so maybe a spinal cord injury, a back injury, they can't use maybe their hands or they can't move their body at all sometimes. Quadriplegic, something like that. Uh, anyway, um, I know Stephen Hawking also uses this sort of eye tracking control and it's designed for people who can't use the standard um, hardware, so keyboard and mouse, etc. And they can navigate the screen just by moving their eyes. And you can see this man's got two screens here. You can see this little camera here and on the screen it looks like he's got a keyboard so maybe he'll look at the letter and it will come up on the screen and maybe you can move about the screen by um, moving his eyes um, and this is just an image of a I believe this was a picture from some maybe a Nintendo Wii maybe or a Kinect just testing out some um, uh, this sort of technology so another example of devices being adapted for users with specific needs is that um, 
people who are blind or visually impaired will often use braille and if you don't know what braille is, braille is a writing system it's these little dots, I don't know how well you can see, it's maybe watching a full screen you can see and um, often you'll see on um, if you've ever used a cash machine or sometimes maybe traffic lights, the buttons will have braille on them for people who are blind so that they can read what's on the screen. It's just a way of, it's almost like a different language um, that interprets the letters for people who are blind or can't see as well. So bra um, a braille keyboard can be used and this is actually just a keyboard cover that gets placed on with braille um, equivalents of the letters. You can also get actually a braille um, audio, uh, not an audio, uh, a monitor sort of thing. I don't really understand how it works but all I know is that instead of looking at a screen you you can feel this and it will represent what's on the screen. You can also get actually a braille printer. Um, again it's quite small maybe if you're watching full screen you see this paper's got some indents on it. Indents that form this braille language and people can put their you know, run their fingers over this and read it like that. Um, so, an, an example of an exam question maybe it, um, it gives you a picture of something and asks you how it can be adapted for people who are blind or deaf or etc. As long as your reason is sort of logical, then it'll be accepted. I think this is quite an easy topic, um, easier compared to the other ones. Um, but anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.